It's just beautiful out right now. It is beautiful. Well, I think this trucker found a home. <laughs> now, I've been working just a little bit right here on this rust. You can see here, you see the stains? Now, these stains were from uh, chemicals when it was out at the uh, uh, salvage yard. And uh, I think uh, what they did was they were filling up their uh, weed killer cans and stuff on here, spilling it around. But the stains like this will lift out once you do the preliminary. And I thought I would demonstrate the old woodworker's way of removing rust. Okay, I, I'm going to get a camera tripod, I think. And I'll be right back. And what is going on with you? Are you about ready for me to cook something for you? Are you hungry again? I think you are. Hey, I found my other two uh, two and a half pound lead hammers and I'll clean those up and get them ready to go too. Okay, we're going to do the woodworker's method of removing rust. Now, I went over it here and we can look on this part here and see that I have gotten some of it off but haven't really scrubbed this. What's going on? You'd be good. Come on. It's probably going to bark the whole time. Okay, now what I'm going to do is mix some acetone. Okay, I'll pour some acetone in, not a whole lot, it evaporates kind of quickly. This has been laying out in the dirt, but it doesn't matter. Dextron 3 with Mercon, I think they get that from the planet Mercury, don't they? Okay, I'm going to pour some of that in. And it's going to be like expected. I'll show you. Now, is there this brush here? I got a smaller brush. You can see how that is in there? It's like that uh, trans foot. It's on the bottom. So I'm just going to start with this brush and start scrubbing it. I already cut, scraped it a bit. But we'll get this on there. I hope you're all doing good today. But this is the woodworker's secret formula. Now, this works very closely like PB Blaster. And you might not think PB Blaster works very well, but the missing element is a brass brush. And it causes a slurry. We'll get that slurry going, and then you know it's, it almost boils. Can you see that over on that end? We'll put some right in the middle. When it's warm like this, you see that? It's really interesting. Okay, I'm just going to keep rubbing that in. And I'm going to use uh, this brush, which is pretty soft. There's a really bad stain right there. That's some of the bad stuff right there. Yeah, that'll get a slurry going quicker. You can see it starting to get dark. Now this is, uh, it's really neat how that boils on there when you first put it on. See that? Yeah. <laughs> 
pretty soon that uh, acetone disappears. Now this brush here, you want to make sure the brush is a real brass. And this is a, a Hobart orange brush. At least it was in the Hobart section. Now see, this is really working its slurry up. It's very, this is a very stiff brush. It's going to keep working. You know, there might be better ways to remove this rust, but I'm not causing any damage to this. And this is how I got it off that call first. You take a scraper. The woodworking guys use straight razor blades, which just makes it harder. But I take and make these little short handle carbide scrapers, a little over a half thousandths wide on the tip. And then you can just run it long strokes. And it's like squeegee in that stuff. See that? See that's starting to brighten up already. See, I got this uh, nickel welts uh, stand a little taller than the table. So I have to uh, work on those. And I'll tell you what, uh, those, those stole this carbide pretty quick. Oh, I feel that stuff lifting up. And I'm scraping it up off. Also removing any burrs, gliding right across the machine work that is on the top of this table. I'll talk about that. I think it's interesting. Is um, this machine finished the top of this table? And I swept it across, and it was within one thousandths that way. And I'm going to put uh, when I get this clean. I'm going to put a. Um, I got a long uh, Pratt and Whitney parallel I can put a, across here and uh, drop an indicator down and see what's going on here. So they put a fly cutter in the spindle of this and reface this table. That's what happened. And this table was not original to this drill and it's had more use than the table that is uh, correct for this drill and it's a heavier table so Carlton table and this is uh, what they use on some very large drills I'm very grateful that it has this table, but someone made off with the Morris Moore Speed table, which had uh, a swivel movement. And maybe a little bit more precision than this one. But like I said, I'm very grateful to have this table. Now these radial drills without a table are worth next to nothing. They got to have a table. Now, the plain table is called a box table and it doesn't tilt. It's like what it's called. It's like a cast iron box. Brings the work up where you can do it. Now, the old guy at the salvage yard up the street here where I got this, he sold me the milling machine for 500 bucks, rusted, and he wanted uh, $500 for this without the table. Somebody offered him five uh, or a thousand dollars for the table, maybe 1,200, but didn't want the drill, and he wouldn't separate it. He's he kind of ornery, you know. The old guys can be. Well, if you're going to buy the table, then you're going to take the drill. 
Okay, see what I did there? Just okay. We'll go a little. We'll go over that one more time. Yeah, I got time for it. I think this will. Uh... really come out nice in the end just get a little bit more of that in there there's already some uh, ATF in there so and the sun is going down you can see it boiling kind of can you see that I clean the lens. <laughs> you know, I at the end of the day, you know, I go, man, I'm getting old and blind. And I realize that these machines have sprayed oil all over my glasses. And it happens to the camera lens, too. Okay, so I initially got that off. Now, this time, I'm going to use my best brush. I got this hat out like a brush and broom company and it costs like 35 bucks oak handle tempered brass bristles and this this uh did the uh, the milling machine and the column on the on the drill here plus a lot on the old axle set and what's nice about this one it's got those short bristles and you can put a hand on top of it. And what I like to do with this one is go in a figure eight motion. I'm gonna get on that other side because that's uh, kind of one of the bad spots. There we go, well the lid's on it. You see, it gets that dark, uh, muddy slurry. Yeah, when it's doing that, Chloe's being so patient, baby. Yeah, you're a good dog, Chloe. She really is. She's kind of my eyes and ears. Let's see. Kind of like the figure eight motion when you're lapping by hand. I turn the brush here 180 and 90. You know. But I think you can see the advantage of this brush because this is, I'm not pushing like super hard, but I'm scrubbing it. And we'll have a look at it. Now, you have to do this a few times, and then once you do this with the brushes, then just wipe it down with kerosene, or that's what I do. And then it, then it lifts the uh, remaining stains out. I don't... I don't know what they're, uh, if they make tilting tables like this. I know they make box tables uh, for import drills. But this table would cost thousands of dollars. And it's heavy. It weighs a lot. The drill totally uh, weighs just over 6,000 pounds with the table on it. And uh, I think the drill is uh, just under 5,000, I think, but I'm without a table. I'm not sure. But I know this thing weighs 6,000 because they weighed it over at the salvage yard there. Okay, I'm going to wipe that off and we'll have a look at it. And I'm going to have this cover off tomorrow. 
do it though. Yeah, just keep working on it. You can see on every one of these, somebody over the years came and used this thing as an anvil. <laughs> but I think it'll be just fine. Okay, well, I will be back.